Hey, what's up party people? John of the Geek here. And yes, this is a Ryzen build. No, this is not a comeback. So basically the Ryzen hype train was just too strong for me to ignore. And I've always been particular to building budget friendly systems uh, as well as uh, most bang for the buck and uh, you know, price to performance, that type of stuff. So I had to build this system and I want to make a video on it. And this was a system that cost less than $500, right? That's including tax and shipping and whatever uh, fees you got to pay. Um, less than $500 for a pretty good system. And I'll talk about like what the system is capable of doing at the end of this video. So first I'm going to go over the parts list, right? And then I'll tell you how much I paid for the parts. Uh, then there's going to be a time-lapse build of the system and probably while uh, the, um, the time-lapse build is going on, I'll probably narrate over talking about uh, the parts, uh, why I chose the parts that I chose, where I got them from, and why you don't have to or you may not be able to get the exact same parts that I got, but you should be able to find things comparable. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so starting with the graphics card, we have a Gigabyte Radeon RX 460 2 gig model. Then we have the case in the back there is the Deep Cool Tesseract, and it's the red color version. Then we have a Drivo X1 Pro 128 gig solid state drive. And underneath that is the single stick of DDR4 memory, and it's an 8 gig capacity. Then we've got the AMD Ryzen 5 CPU that's a 1400 model with the included CPU cooler. And for the motherboard, we've got the MSI B350M Gaming Pro. And powering the system is the EVJ 450 BT, 450 watt power supply. So let's get right into the build. All right, so starting with the motherboard here, I picked this up on Amazon for $60. Right, it was $59.99, it was on sale. Normal price for this is $70. And so this is brand new, not open boxed. And uh, $70 is a good deal on its own, but 60 bucks is pretty good as well. Right, so the CPU here, I picked it up from Fry's Electronics and it was 150 bucks. And that's a pretty good deal because that's $20 off the normal price. Um, and it there might not be a Fry's Electronics near you i understand and i haven't seen anywhere else sell this for 150 dollars but you know it's possible if you go to like jet.com and be, sign up to be a new user you might be able to get some discounts to get it down to close to 150 bucks right and uh the ram here the ram was just off of ebay it was some like oem pull type of RAM stick and the heatsink that's on there, that's just extra. That's purely for aesthetics. Uh, it doesn't really do anything um, and it doesn't come with that. It was just uh, uh, something I had laying around and I added it on there, right? And uh, the power supply here, uh, this was $22 on Amazon. Brand new too, it was on sale. Now they'd have a 430 watt power supply by EVGA and that often goes on sale for like $20. But for 22 bucks, um, for 450 watt that's not a bad deal it's pretty good and it's enough to power this system and possibly do an upgrade in the graphics card later on say like to a uh, 470 or 480 right okay so the case here the case uh it's an oldie but a goodie and uh, this is a deep cool tesseract i picked this up from new egg and it was 35 dollars, i believe free shipping now free shipping not might not happen in your area. Uh, Newegg just happens to be close to where I'm at, so they're able to offer me free shipping. But uh, I've seen this case, I think the normal price is about 40 bucks, $45 maybe. Uh, it goes on sale quite often for about 30 to $35, and I picked this up for uh, 30 bucks. I'm sorry, $35 I believe it was. And so they come in a variety of colors, and obviously I picked red here to try to, you know, um, color match the red team that comes with red LED fans uh, on the back there and one on the front then it's got uh, 220 millimeter fans up on the top there and for this system I'm going to attempt to mount a all-in-one radiator 
a uh, 240 millimeter radiator up on the top there for the CPU for some uh, some overclocking of the CPU. So the next couple of things I guess I'll talk about is the storage and the graphics card. That's the only thing that's only two things that's left on here. So for the storage, I picked the uh, small capacity, the cheapest SSD that I could go for. It was either a SSD or a standard hard drive. And I think for gaming, uh, an SSD is very beneficial when you want to load up games faster. It doesn't give you faster frame rates. But um, for now, I think getting a fast SSD is is kind of worth it. Um, and if you really, you know, download a lot of games or play multiple games, uh, then yeah, sure, get the hard drive first if you already own multiple games that you want to play. But chances are, if this is like your first gaming rig, you probably don't own a whole bunch of games and you're probably just building this just for one particular game that you love that you want to play, for example, I like to play Overwatch. That's the only game I'm playing right now. That's all I have time for anyways. But um, if I was new to the whole PC gaming world, I probably am gonna play just one or two games. And 128 gigs is, is sufficient for now. And then once I get into bigger games or more games, and plus this is a budget system, you know, I'm not probably gonna be able to play a whole lot of hardcore AAA titles uh, on this system anyways. So that's why I went with the uh, SSD first. And uh, 50 bucks on Amazon, that's a regular price, no sale. It's pretty good. They advertise 500 megabytes plus read and write, but uh, my initial SSD speed testing that I'd done, it didn't quite come out that speed. Um, it was a little disappointing, but I'm not sure if I tested it correctly. So I'll have to get back to you on that on a part two of this video, which I'll speak a little bit more uh, in a little bit. So here I am plugging in the SSD and uh, it certainly has room for a hard drive. I think by the time you're watching this video, I put in a one terabyte hard drive just for kicks. And a one terabyte hard drive goes around 40 to uh, $50. The same price as this SSD here. And uh, if uh, I were to pick anything else, um, I guess, I'm not sure if the motherboard actually has a M.2 slot, I'll have to check on that. But that's another option too, if you have the money to spend, if you wanted to upgrade that SSD to something faster, then that would be the option there is a M.2 PCIe NVMe solid state drive. All right, so last but not least is the graphics card. And so this is the, uh, I picked this up off of Amazon warehouse. So it was an open box item and it was $82, right? And I think the normal price on sale for a four gig model is a hundred bucks. And I would recommend getting that. It's only a little bit more it's, and you'll get a brand new card and uh, you can probably handle a little bit higher resolution with a four gig model, right? And so here's the system finally built and I do plan on making a part two video on this. So be sure to stay tuned for that. The part two is gonna involve uh, running some benchmarks on here like Cinebench, Firestrike, as well as uh, probably a game. And uh, the only game I'm gonna play on here is Overwatch. And I can tell you right now, it gets at least 70 frames per second on Ultra with Overwatch and uh, AMD FreeSync monitor that I'm using uh, makes it look nice and smooth, right? So uh, be sure, hopefully I'll be able to produce this part two video on here, as well as talk about some uh, potential upgrades that this thing can handle. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.